Hi people there, this is the Blue Revolution. Welcome back to my channel. And would you believe that we're already getting another update uh, for War for War The last couple of days we've had a few uh, dev blogs showing off uh, some of the new vehicles coming uh, with this next major patch, including the A7 Corsair and also a few uh, battle cruisers as well. But today we've had a dev blog for the Blackburn Buccaneer, which is just absolutely amazing. I hope this was coming with the last patch with new power because that screenshots of this on a HMS arc roll, but unfortunately we didn't get it with that update. But we are getting it now on the absolutely fantastic and awesome aircraft, the mighty book is the most iconic thing with uh, this aircraft is the fact that it has a revolving uh, bomb bay on it, which is just really cool. You can see it uh, just there. It can also um, carry um, a lot of variety of weapons, including uh, mostly intended to carry uh, nuclear uh, ordnance, but it can also carry conventional weapons as well, including bombs, rockets, uh, bullpups, and sidewinder missiles. However, it doesn't have internally mounted guns on it, which is one of the major weaknesses uh, with uh, this aircraft. We're going to read through the dev block here because. Uh, we can. Uh, the Buccaneer was a British naval strike aircraft developed by the Blackburn Company in the late 1950s as a replacement for the Supermarine Shimitar. Uh, soon, pilots of War Thunder will have the chance to take control of a variety of well known Buccaneer, of the well known Buccaneer as it arrives in player hangars with the release of the next major update. Briefly, a Cold War British twin engine naval strike aircraft possessing good flight characteristics and a sizable uh, payload. Uh, the size of the payload and this is up to like 12,000 pounds was definitely not to be sniffed at very good uh, payload uh, on this uh, we'll read through the the pros and cons according to gaijin uh, the pros being the powerful engines large payload air to air and air to surface missiles extremely low takeoff and landing speeds as well as uh, low store speeds and the cons being no afterburner and lack of installed guns uh, this is a uh, subsonic aircraft it can go 1000 and uh, 50 uh, kilometers an hour so it is uh, not supersonic and also like i've been saying it doesn't have guns on it either but it can carry the sidewinders which means it will be able to defend itself if uh, it comes under attack primarily you're going to be using this i think in a ground realistic battle or if you do want to take it out in aeristic you're probably going to be hitting uh, ground targets uh, for the most part uh interesting point to note on uh, the extremely low takeoff and landing speeds uh, this uses a bleed air uh, system uh, from the engines across the wings which allow it uh, to uh, increase uh, the lift on landing because uh, it's meant to design to the land on a uh British naval carriers which are a lot smaller than the, the American counterparts and to increase the stability they would use this uh, bleed air system to be able to uh, keep the aircraft stable as it coming into land. Uh, one of the side uh, things of this though is that I had to run the engine at a lot higher speed which means the air brake on this is actually extremely powerful as you can see here very large air brake on this to be able to stop the aircraft after it comes to land uh, on uh, the carriers. Really cool looking jet Really looking forward to this uh, book uh, coming in uh, into the game. You can also see here that the fuselage is uh, shaped like a Coke bottle, which is really uh, interesting. Very d interesting design with uh, this jet, which is why uh, it's also called a uh, Coke bottle as well. Uh, and more fun that the book in the S2 is set to arrive in player hangers as part of the next major update and expands the fa uh, roster of famous British uh, miniature aircraft in our game by another entry. Apart from being a worthy addition to any British pilot's collection, the Buccaneer has a lot more to offer than pleasing aesthetics as we intend to share in today's blog, in today's dev blog. So strap yourselves in. So yeah, one of the most uh, characteristic features of the Buccaneer is the two large air intakes leading into the size box, um, equally sizable engine nacelles at the wing roots. The latter house a pair of powerful Rolls Royce Spey Mark 101 turbofan engines capable of generating an impressive 11,255 pounds of thrust. As a result, the Buccaneer S2 can reach a top speed of 580 knights, 1,074 kilometers an hour at sea level. While this rightfully may not seem like a rather modest top speed when compared to some of the jets added to the game in recent updates, it's worth noting that the purpose of the Buccaneer's engines is not to achieve record broken speeds, but allow the aircraft to carry an impressive payload. So yeah, this aircraft can carry quite a substantial payload for the size. Um, Another interesting note to note, uh, the S2 had the upgraded um, spay engines in it. The originally, the original engines uh, in this aircraft were rather underpowered and had a massive problems uh, getting this aircraft uh, up uh, off the deck of uh, the aircraft carriers. But uh, these are improved, improved um, at Buccaneer S2 had uh, the spay uh, Mark 101 turbofan engines, which uh, 
um, greatly improved uh, the takeoff weight uh, for this plane. So like I'm saying, it's uh, not the quickest of aircraft, it's not going to be the fastest, it's not supersonic, but it is going to have that really, really good diverse payload as well. Uh, the way that the aircraft would primarily work is that it would cruise at altitude uh, as it was coming towards uh, the target and then it would dive down to around about uh, 1,000 feet. It was primarily designed uh, to take on Soviet shipping, so it would take um, air to um, ship uh, missiles as well as uh, the nuclear bomb uh, as well as uh, it's primarily uh, ordnance. This is the reason why it didn't have the guns fitted because it, for the most part it uh, didn't uh, need it. Fun fact, during the other days of the Buccaneers development the project was dubbed BNA and BANA for secrecy later into the aircraft being jokingly named Banana Jet. I have not heard of this, this is the first time I've uh, heard of that uh, being called uh, Banana Jet. doesn't look like a banana to me. Like I've been saying, it looks more like a Coke bottle, but I guess uh, uh, that's probably somewhere that someone has said that, so uh, we'll take that as a fact. Speaking of the Buccaneers uh, S2's uh, payload, the aircraft possesses provisions to take up to 12,000 pounds of uh, ordnance in battles via to internal bomb bay and underwing hardpoints. Pilots can subsequently choose how to allot the available pay uh, payload by equipping the aircraft with a rival selection of unguarded bombs, rockets, as well as missiles in order to successfully perform any strike task at hand. For air combat, the Buccaneer S2 carries a pair of early Sidewinder missiles as well as a radar warner and mounted flare pods to counter incoming infrared guided weapons. However, the Buccaneer S2 uh, doesn't possess any conventional gun armament, making the aircraft entirely reliant on its suspended rope ready. Like I was saying, it's not going to be used for the most part in aeristic, and if you are going to be using it in aeristic, I think you're probably going to be going for the ground targets. Uh, with its impressive uh, bomb load and if uh, you do get a target of opportunity with the sidewinders you'd still probably be able to use them but once you fire those off you're definitely going to be very vulnerable to uh, enemy aircraft and your best bet is probably really going to be flying away and trying to uh, determine with uh, the infrared and uh, the chat um the flare system uh, on uh, this aircraft in terms of, like the movability expect it to be quite pretty movable to be honest um although we'll have to see it when we get it uh, in game. The long awaited Blackburn Burnier S2 is finally arriving to Warfund as part of the next major update and will further expand the British high uh, tier strike aircraft roster. In the meantime, be sure to stay tuned to the news as we continue reviewing what the, least, uh, the last update of the year will bring to Warfund. Until then, clear, spy, uh, clear, uh, freaking out, clear skies pilots. I cannot talk uh, today. It's really cool that we're getting these like niche, like late. Uh, like 1950s to 1960s aircraft obviously earlier this week as well we had the a7d corsair and uh, it's pretty cool that these are mostly forgotten about aircraft are finally making their way into the game are they going to change the game for the most part probably not because we've already got very similar aircraft which already fill uh, similar roles but it's still cool that we're getting them into the day and like i've been saying i really do like uh, the book and in terms of america there's just so many still like aircraft that need to be added in that are like have like the f8 crusader we've got things like the f101 voodoo there's so many naval aircraft but some of the other nations especially now need to get some uh some of the gaps in the tech tree field and especially in like top tier uh, close air support where they're definitely uh, lacking i think for the most part but we're getting the buckburn buccaneer with this update which is really cool like i've been saying we really do like this jet and i'm definitely going to be probably doing a video on this but probably in the ground forces battle we'll just be carpet bombing just the entire area i really just sorry, feel sorry for the most part for tankers we get a rough time for the most part who uh, mostly just play uh, tanks and don't actually have the aircraft to go with them. It's pretty much now just uh, air support thunder at top tier. Once you die in your tanks, that's it. You're into a jet and you're trying to bomb the shit out of people. But it's just going to get worse and hopefully... Uh, moving forward, we might get a different kind of sort of game mode where we can use these more in a, a realistic type setting, but they're not going to be get clapped on for the most part by um, I don't know the Harriers, which seem to be rolling uh, right now. But anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think of the Mighty Buck coming to War Thunder, and also what other aircraft you would like to see uh, in terms of like the close air support role for other nations as well. But anyway, until the next time, please comment, like, uh, like comment, share, all that good stuff, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one sometime soon. Bye. Bye.